before it's too late. South Africa's rugged northeast Transvaal region is in the relentless grip of another drought, as it has been for almost two years out of three over the past few decades. The hope for abundant summer rains was in vain again this year. Now at the end of another dry season, the land is parched, water holes are drying up, grass is gone, and the trees are all but dead. Ian Sussens manages Shakuda, a 5,000 hectare private game park, and the long dry has him worried. This is one of the phenomena in Africa, and um, the drought seemed to be more, more vicious. And even in the larger conservation areas, um, the impact has been of such a devastating nature that they've had to or either reduce the numbers themselves or they've had massive die-offs. It's not only the, the amount of animals that effectively die off, it's, it's the terrible slow death of these animals actually starving to death. At Shakuda, the animals are being fed with hay. It's not ideal, but it will stave off the worst effects of the crippling drought. Whilst the feed is a lifesaver for the animals that would otherwise starve, it also introduces another danger into their lives. And wildlife veterinarian specialist Peter Rogers often has to sort out the damage. As soon as you put four fences around a place, you're interfering with nature straight away. So what happens is, is generally speaking, in a lot of these reserves, there is relative overstocking. So in a drought situation, the animals cannot move out. And of course, it leads to, to competition. It's the old story against survival of the fittest. People feed them artificially, brings them into close proximity, and they still have their territorial disputes. So the, the opportunities and chances of injury are, are, are much increased. That's what has happened with this massive male white rhino. It has been in a fight with another rhinoceros or an elephant, and it's been severely gored under its right shoulder and is clearly in pain. If it isn't treated with antibiotics within the next few hours, a severe infection is likely to set in and the animal faces an agonizing death. The rhino had gone into hiding, as do most injured animals, and the rangers have been scouring the bush for several days in search of the injured creature. Now they must immobilize it with a tranquilizer dart so they can treat the injury. Once it's still the drug starts to take effect, we can go in quickly. A tense and dangerous time. One wrong move and this injured rhino could turn on its helpers and attack them, ending in injury or death of either men or rhino or both. A hit, but not a clean shot. The dart may have been deflected by a twig. Now the chase is on. The animal is now at great risk. In its drug state, it could injure itself further in the rugged terrain, or worse, be killed by another animal. There are two of the world's five species of rhinoceros in southern Africa, the white and the black rhino, and both are teetering on the edge of extinction. Despite this, many Africans know little about how endangered their wildlife is. At this ecological awareness camp, teenagers are learning the difference between their two rhino species. These are the white rhinos. They eat grass and they've got wide lips. Wide lips. 
leaves are the black rhinos. They eat from the trees and they've got long leaves. Long leaves. <laughs> These enthusiastic actors also explain how the two species got their names. No, the white rhino is the white mount. And also this is the, the, the black rhino. The Early Dutch rhino. explorers named the white rhinos white mount rhino for their wide mouths, adapted for grazing the open belt. British colonialists mistook white for white and in their ignorance decided the leaf browsing species they discovered feeding in woodland should be called black rhino. Neither species are actually coloured to match their names, but the so-called white rhino is often lighter toned in its open grazing environment. It was the white rhino's preference for feeding an open country that almost led to its extinction. They were easy prey for the big game hunters. It was here at Umfalozi in southern Africa's KwaZulu-Natal province where they made their last stand just over a century ago. Conservation manager Peter Hartley is proud of the game reserve's role in preserving both the white and black species of rhino. 